Hi, welcome to another video. Today I'm going to be reviewing <laughs> Sorcery of Thorns by Margaret Rogerson. One thing about this book, I did enjoy it. I had a lot of fun with it. I was definitely satisfied with this being the first book I finished this year so far. I guess without further ado, we'll get straight into the review. Sorcery of Thorns is a YA fantasy following the character of Elizabeth a foundling who was adopted and raised up in one of the great libraries of Ostomy, Summers Hall. She is an apprentice in training to becoming a warden, who are the protectors and keepers of these great libraries. Now, these great libraries hold these magical books called the grimoires. These books have a life of their own and when they're attacked or damaged they turn into these monstrous creatures called the Malefics. So wardens are positioned in these libraries to protect and prevent grimoires from turning into Malefics. But they're also there to defend others from harm if a Malefict comes to being. So all her life Elizabeth has been told that sorcerers and their dark magic are evil and they're not to be trusted with the grimoires. At the beginning of the story Elizabeth is tasked with transporting and securing a high-class grimoire into the heavily protected vaults of Summers Hall. And during this time she has a chance encounter with a rather sarcastic and charming sorcerer by the name of Nathaniel Thorne that may have sparked a slow change in perspective of what she once knew about sorcerers. One day Summers Hall is attacked and a malefic is released. Elizabeth intervenes and kills the malefic but with no witnesses she is framed as a suspect. So then Elizabeth has no choice but to make an alliance with her sworn enemy, a sorcerer. As she is thrusted into the world of politics and conspiracies that may not only endanger the great libraries but the world itself. <laughs> so, in terms of world building, I think that Rogerson created a wonderful fantasy realm that's sort of inspired by the Gothic Victorian era, but the fantastical elements of the story gave it a very whimsical quality. It's very Ghibli-esque. It's been compared to Howl's Moving Castle, which I definitely agree with. There are a lot of similarities, which I enjoyed. And I wasn't mad about the similarities. In fact, I kind of like how Margaret Rogerson's books are kind of Studio Ghibli-like. Also, when I was reading the book, I kind of imagined it like an anime. Wouldn't it be amazing if Studio Ghibli adapted this book? I feel like it would be an awesome anime. Anyway, going back to the story, it's fun, it's cute, it's quirky, but it also has darker elements to it. And you do feel a sense of danger for the characters at certain parts of the story. So in comparison to her first novel, this book is definitely a step towards more older readers. It's definitely less fluffy and less romance heavy than An Enchantment of Ravens. But I kind of wanted more from the romance. And that's saying something because I'm not particularly interested in romance in a lot of novels, but this one, I don't know, maybe it's because of the expectation I had after reading An Enchantment of Ravens. I kind of did want it to be a bit more fluffy, a bit more romance heavy, but not too much. I feel like this book gave me very little of that. <laughs> I guess it depends on what you want. If you want more of the story and more of the plot and less romance, then I guess you might enjoy this book a lot more. That by no means has changed my reading experience with this book. I still thoroughly enjoyed it and had fun with it. Now the magic system. There isn't much of a magic system. More so the explanation of the magic system was lacking in this book. Things just happened and the characters were able to conjure up spells and stuff but you kind of didn't know 
how but because you're following the character of Elizabeth earlier on in the book it focuses more on the tools that are used for magic rather than the magic that sorcerers use and of course the main focus being the grimoires these magical books that are alive and have a personality of their own each book is unique from each other they can be both playful and mischievous what I found sort of adorable about these books was that sometimes they would would sing opera or sometimes they would spit ink at you if they were annoyed or feeling upset. You kind of had to handle them with care and respect because they had feelings like humans. <laughs> it can be cute but there was also a sense of mystery and danger to them as well, particularly the higher class books. The grimoires have a class system, so depending on how high it's ranked on this class system determines how dangerous these books can be. Some of these higher class books don't even need to turn into malefics to kind of influence and harm a person. Also to create grimoires is a forbidden art in this world because in order to create these books you would have to use dark magic and horrific sacrifices in order to form and bind these books together. So each grimoire is a one of a kind. So these grimoires are formed from magic and sorcery so it is interesting to see that the facilitators and protectors of of these books don't particularly agree with or use the books or trusting sorcery. Confusing why they're protecting it. It's kind of odd why they're protecting it. I mean if they hate it so much like wouldn't they destroy these books? Moving on from the earlier parts of the book and we are out in the world beyond the library and we're introduced to a society that relishes in sorcery and science. The aristocratic sorcerers are even seen as celebrities. It was definitely a stark contrast from the views the librarians had on sorcery. But with all the display of elaborate sorceries and high-class societies, I think Rogerson could have elaborated and sort of fleshed out the magic of this world a bit more. But we didn't get much in depth with it. We were introduced to a lot of cool magical elements that I wish we knew more about, like the grimoires and the other magical artifacts that we're introduced to. How the sorcerers practice their magic wasn't even properly explained and maybe it's because we're following a character that's not a sorcerer, but still I think there could have been interesting ways to entwine that element into the narrative. At points in the story it did show that casting spells took a great deal of effort and concentration. There were definitely rules and limits to what sort of spells you could cast. There's even laws that restrict sorcerers from using certain spells or even having access to certain grimoires to prevent catastrophes from happening. But again, the complexities of how the magic is used was not properly explained. The wardens in the libraries were also an interesting aspect that I would have loved to know more about. They were essentially librarian knights who were trained to care for these books but they were also trained in combat skills so I feel like we could have seen more of the action particularly because Elizabeth was training to become a warden so I kind of wanted to see more of what wardens do. I feel like that sort of career path could have been explained a bit more, but alas it wasn't. There were so many interesting elements of the story, but like Margaret Rogerson's first book, An Enchantment of Ravens, this book kind of felt a little surface level. But again, this book is a standalone story, so I could understand and that there could only be so much you can put into one book. But it also wrapped up sort of nicely at the end, so I'm not complaining too much. I kind of want maybe potentially companion stories that are set in the same world. I feel like that could definitely be an interesting direction, but we can only hope. I did love the world a lot. I feel like there could be more that we could see of the world. I guess that's up to the author to write and publish. We shall see. <laughs> Moving on to the characters, let's focus on Elizabeth first. She's our protagonist that we're following throughout this novel and it's also solely from her perspective. She starts the story off a little naive, a little sheltered I suppose. She has a very 
singular view of the world. Because she's grown up in this library and she hasn't had much exposure to the outside world or to sorcery, so she can be very wary of magic users. But then again, she can be a little too trusting at certain parts of the story. But I don't think that made her dumb. I mean, she was naive and it took a little longer to sort of recognize what was actually dangerous or not. But when she was thrown into the outside world, she was quickly able to adapt and learn and her worldviews kind of changed. She was able to take more risks in the people that she was wary of in the first place. I definitely think that she was very brave and capable when she needed to be. Even when she's put into difficult situations, the way she reacts never seems out of character for her. Even when her worldview changes, she carries out her plans with the intention of doing the right thing. And she stands her ground when those moments come. She's often described as a child of the library and often is shown that she has a deeper connection connection and understanding with the magic of the grimoires. There was this innocence and childlike quality to her that was both endearing and lovable. And that part of her never changed throughout the book. Even when she had moments of being fierce, there was always a gentleness about her. Moving on to Nathaniel, our aristocratic sorcerer who gets entangled on this adventure with Elizabeth. He's referred to as a magister, which I guess is an upper class, higher ranking sorcerer, definitely because of his lineage and the certain demon he has bound himself to. In this world, the way sorcerers gain their powers is to bound themselves with a demon from another the world. That's where they draw the power from. It's sort of like having a companion, I suppose. There's a lot of class systems in this book. Firstly, the grimoires, then there's the sorcerers, there's even a distinction between highborn demons and lowborn demons that has an influence over how high you are ranked as a sorcerer. Anyway, going back to Nathaniel, I really enjoyed his character. He was witty and sarcastic, but still had a charming and charismatic quality to him. He was sort of selfish and flawed as a character. He had a very dry sense of humour that created amazing banter with the people he interacted with. But there was also a very vulnerable side to him as well that was revealed, which I appreciated. There was times when he was a bit coward-like. He didn't want to get involved in certain things, but Elizabeth like sort of drags him into certain situations unwillingly. So yeah, it was interesting to see a character like that being the love interest. Moving on to Silas, Nathaniel's demon. When I see people commenting about Sorcery of Thorns, it's sort of a unanimous agreement that they all love the character of Silas. I have to agree. <laughs> He's the one character I truly cared about. Like, I did care about Elizabeth and Nathaniel, but he was so endearing as a character as well. Even though he's supposed to be this otherworldly being and evil incarnate, but because he's bound to the Thorn family, he's sort of like Nathaniel's butler. Throughout the novel, you see this bond, this friendship between Nathaniel and Silas, which I found very adorable and sweet. He has soft manners and sort of a nurturing quality about him. It seems like he genuinely cares about Nathaniel and Elizabeth's well-being, but you also see glimpses of his more dangerous and demonic side as well. And you kind of question throughout the novel whether he's genuinely loyal to the Thorn family. But I do like the found family aspect to these characters. They definitely brought different elements of personality that definitely made for an interesting dynamic between the characters and how they grew and learnt from each other. Outside of the Golden Trio, I suppose, the supporting characters weren't exactly fleshed out enough for me. They could have been further developed and more involved in the plot. Like Elizabeth's best friend, Katrian, I felt like she was very spunky and sassy and I feel like she would have been a good character to come to the forefront of the plot. Also the director of Summers Hall at the beginning of the book. She's sort of like Elizabeth's 
motherly figure. I feel like that could be further explored too. I did really like her character. She was sort of cold and stern but sort of loving at the same time. Overall I gave this book a 4 out of 5 stars on Goodreads. It wasn't anything groundbreaking but I had a lot of fun with it. I love the world that Margaret Rogerson created. I like the characters. So much so that I want more of it. Like, please, Margaret, write companion series at least. Even though I love the environment and the world that she built, the plot was a little bit weak. The pacing was a bit all over the place. There were times when it kind of dragged a little bit, but there were parts that really flew by and things just happened out of convenience as well. And it took me out of the story a little bit. The villain and the motivations were weak. I feel like that is where we could have got something really amazing, but the villain was generic. I did not understand that person at all. That aspect could have elevated this story a lot more. But also other things you might appreciate about this book. I certainly like the inclusion of bisexual representation. It's because it wasn't just thrown in there for the sake of diversity, but you kind of really got to know the character as a person and that aspect was just part of the person. Also the main character is a tall girl so she wasn't the typical beautiful petite girl that you so often see in YA fantasy. There was something a little bit different about that and just the way she carried herself because she was a taller girl. I mean women they come in all sizes and I definitely think that that should be represented more in YA fiction especially but that aspect I did like as well. And I think that's it. This was just fun, quirky, whimsical. I loved it even though I had certain criticism on the story but when I was reading it I had fun with it. I think I know what to sort of expect from Margaret Rogerson's books in the future but I definitely will be reading her books in the future. Just from the two books that I read from her I've been liking it. It's just a fun, light, fluffy, whimsical read. I mean she could go totally opposite to that in the future which I don't mind either but I do like her certain style. So yeah that's it. I hope you enjoyed this review. If you have read this book and you kind of want to discuss then comment down below. We'll have a discussion. If not I hope this review gave a different perspective. I know this book has been very I suppose polarizing. Some people love it, some people hate it. It's just my personal opinion of this story but yeah I hope you enjoyed regardless and I'll see you in my next video. Bye!